Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today we are in Iger, a beautiful little town in the north of Hungary. We took the train here which took about two hours from Budapest and it cost about 2,500 hoof, which is about 650 USD, which is really affordable. It was a super nice train with sockets and super modern. And now we're here, we're ready to explore. Iger is actually known for wine, specifically one type of wine, and we're gonna drink that later. We're gonna eat and do a usual thing. So let's go explore again. When you get off the train, you actually have to walk about 20 minutes into the center of the town. And you can walk through Shemrish, Kani, Lanayosh, Ket, <laughs> which is a park. And it's super nice, especially in this beautiful weather. We were actually in Iger almost two years ago today and we walked through this park last time and it's so nice at this time of the year, fall time, the leaves are changing, they're falling everywhere, there's chestnuts everywhere on the ground and actually last time we were here we went to this really cool restaurant called Excalibur. It's a medieval themed restaurant. They even serve the food kind of medieval style with the meat hanging on hooks. It was really cool but the food was just okay so we're not going to do that again. I definitely still think it's worth checking out if you are in Iger because it's a pretty cool restaurant. so cute it almost looks like you traveled back in time with all these little houses colorful buildings yeah that's why i think always if you have a little bit of extra time in budapest there's so many cute little towns that are only a two hour three hour or even less train journey away from the city so if you do have time there's so many places to explore so don't just stick to budapest yeah and that's what most people do but come to other towns too Iged has a beautiful town square in the middle of the town and there's also a beautiful Baroque style church that was built in 1771 and it's called Church of Anthony of Padua. I'm sure it has a much more complicated name in Hungarian but I don't know that one. Another one of the main attractions in Iger is the Iger Minaret and that may seem strange to you but Iger was actually ruled by the Ottoman Empire for I think almost 91 years I think it was something like that from 1596 and so this is one of the only traces left of that period in time. It actually used to be attached to a mosque but the mosque was demolished and they kept the minaret as a reminder of that time period. You can actually go up it as well. I think there's 96 steps and I think it's 40 meters high. It's a pretty cool attraction. We're not going to go up today, but yeah, it's a cool little piece of history in the middle of the city. So we came to Corso Eterem for lunch. Um, while obviously Iged is famous for their wines, we're going to have those later. But today it's the most sunny, hot day, even though it's mid-October. So we had to start with a beer, as always. Cold, refreshing beer. Before we came to Iga, we actually looked up if there was any specific food that we needed to try. Of course, we know we're supposed to try the wine, but we couldn't find anything for food. It just told us to try goulash, chicken paprikash, and all the regular old things. So we just came to this restaurant. We decided to pick two things that sounded good. And the first thing that I have here is a braised pork knuckle with onion. It also comes with red cabbage and potatoes. So I have myself a bite here, the cabbage and the pork, and it looks delicious. Mmm. Mmm. Ani was a little bit worried about this when it came out because it's already cut up. Normally when we get a pork knuckle, it's this big lump of meat, but this is amazing. It is so juicy, so fatty, salty, delicious. And of course, the red cabbage has that little bit of sourness, a little bit of sweetness. It's really good. And just standard little wedges of potato. Really, really good. I'm from Germany, so this is very similar to what I used to eat growing up. When I saw this, I was kind of like, this is either going to be very good or bad. Brandon said it's good. And he's right. Mm. So tender. 
dish that I'm gonna try is grilled and smoked sheep cheese or eels cheese, but I think that's the same. And it comes with pea risotto. I don't know how Hungarian the pea risotto is. I think, I guess risotto is technically Italian, but it looks amazing and I've never had that before. And I also have never had sheep cheese grilled like this. It looks kind of gloomy. You can see the smoke edge because that's quite common in Hungary that you have like smoked cheese. Let's try. Mm, it squeaks. Really? Yeah. Mm. It doesn't really taste that cheapy. Like, <laughs> it's delicious though. It's like delicious, smoked, squeaky, salty cheese. So is it like gloomy? Kind of, but it has more of a smoked flavor. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting. It tastes like a better, way better version than, I guess, mushy peas or whatever. Like, it tastes like mushy peas mixed with rice, but like salty and sodium enriched and whatever. It's delicious, but it doesn't really taste Italian. It tastes like a rice, pea, mush, but it's good. Now I'm going to try the sheep cheese and the risotto together. Mmm. That is so strange. Just as you said, it is very smoky, squeaky, salty. I don't think we've ever really had anything quite like this before. It isn't quite like a halloumi, but it's its own thing and it is amazing. And the pea risotto has a nice salty, earthy, kind of mushy taste. It's really good, but it's all about that cheese. That's amazing. The main attraction in Egeret is probably the castle. We've already been here before. It's around $10 or a little bit more, so we're not gonna do that today. It was built in 1442, I think, and something it's famous for is for repelling the attack by the Turkish in 1552 during the siege of Egeret. So we noticed when we go to small Hungarian towns that there's very often a marzipan museum. We actually went to one in the last video in Santendra and here we walked past another one and I can't just walk past, I have to get something. So we got an Isla cookie. I think they might actually be Austrian or at least have Austrian origins. Let's try it. Mmm, mmm. The chocolate is so, so rich because this is actually by the company Shamosh. They make chocolate. It's really, really good creamy dark chocolate and has jam inside. It's a cookie, it kind of tastes marzipan-like. Delicious. Mm. Definitely better than just marzipan. So originally we were gonna go to the Beatles Museum, which is quite random and unique that there's a Beatles museum in this tiny town. I think it belongs to some random guy who had a collection. Yeah, it was like $10, which is insane for Hungarian prices. Like maybe I would pay $10 if we were in the UK, but in Iga, in a small town in Hungary, that's kind of crazy. So we decided against it because we're poor and we are budget travelers. So yep. 10 bucks Can't afford each. that. I don't think so. about to take the sightseeing train in again now from the city center to one of the most important places in again which is the valley of the beautiful women now let's go drink some wine We've 
now arrived at the Valley of the Beautiful Women. Here there are over 200 different wine cellars. There's about 48 that you can actually go in and get different wines from. They range from these big, elaborate, beautiful buildings to these kind of hole in the walls that are in these dingy kind of basements. So we're gonna try a couple out. We're really excited. We haven't been here in a long time, so let's go drink some wine. So all those bars are kind of like lined up in a circle and they're all next to another and they have different numbers. If you want to go to, I don't know, bar number five, then it'll have a five on it. And basically you can, you can go on this like wine crawl and drink, I don't know, 48 glasses of wine after another. And I think they're also quite cheap. Um, I think one glass of like 100 milliliters is only about a dollar something. So you can definitely get really drunk here. Yeah, just drink 50 <laughs> glasses of wine for 50 bucks. Pretty good deal. And there's also food. We are at bar 34 or Kiss Peter. I don't know, it's probably not pronounced Kiss Peter, but that's the name. And we are about to taste our first wine. So this is by far the most famous wine of Ige of this region, and it is called Bull's Blood. It gets its name because back in the day when the Ottoman Empire was here and they were taking over, there was a rumor between the Turkish soldiers that the Hungarians got their strength because they were drinking this dark red wine mixed with bull's blood. So it was the bull's blood that gave them strength to fight back and eventually take over and get their land back. So it's this dark red color and apparently it's supposed to be fruity and a little bit spicy. I don't know, we don't know anything about wine, again. Mm. Just as good as I remember, we actually had this the first time we were in Eager two years ago. It's definitely fruity, it's really smooth, we're not typically major red wine drinkers, but I make an exception for this one. I absolutely love it. Last time when we came to Igad, I found the best red wine in the world because I'm not a red wine drinker, but I found one that I love. It's called Melora. And we went back to the bar and the bar is gone. And I was devastated, but they do have it at a different bar. Mm. Kind of tastes like mold wine, but cold. Yeah. We kind of forgot to mention what the name of this place was about. So it's called, as we mentioned, Valley of the Beautiful Women. And there are a couple different legends of how this region got its name. One was that there was a Venus-like goddess figure that used to be worshipped here, and people used to sacrifice to her. And another reason was just because there was a beautiful woman who used to live in a villa here in this region and she was very nice to the people and somehow the region got named after her. I'm not really sure where it comes from, but this region is very beautiful. There's a statue dedicated to the beautiful woman. And I don't know, I only see you. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna drink up these wines, finish them up, maybe check out a couple more places. Let's have a good time, drink some wine. Cheers! We came to bar number five. Not our first bar, but this one is named or numbered number five. And the wine here... Michelle, this is like her fourth house. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the wine here is only 200 or 250 Hungarian pork, which is 68 cents. This one was 68 cents. Crazy. And they actually have bottles for 800. Hungarian hof as well and we're gonna get some filled up. You can even bring your own bottles I think and they will fill them up for you at any of these bars. So we're gonna go home with a bunch of wine and something really cool about this area is that they've been making wine for almost a thousand years and the area where they grow wine is 5,400 hectares big. It's really big. <laughs> the end of the video we are gonna go back to Budapest but if you don't have a pet to come home to like we do I would definitely recommend spending a night in Egead because it's super awesome to come to the Valley of the Beautiful Women and just drink <laughs> for a while and then go back to the hotel it's just really nice at night on a fall night with all the lights and drinking wine so a day trip is nice but if you have a night maybe you should stay for a night that is it for this video. So as always, give it a like, write us a comment, and the most important thing by far, subscribe. But that's it for now. 
We'll see you all in the next one.